Please be seated for our next contest. If you've used your cell phone during the break, please check once again, make sure it's silenced or better off. Turn it off. Once the contest has begun, the surgeon at arms will secure the doors and the members of the audience are advised to please abstain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. And at the end, please remain silent until all the ballots have been collected. Here is the speaking order for the humorous contest. Contestant number one, Kevin Donahoe. Kevin Donahoe, contestant number one. Contestant number two, Garrett Gray. Garrett Gray, contestant number two. Contestant number three, Tony Fuscon. Tony Fuscon, contestant number three. Contestant number four, Sherry Crosby. Sherry Crosby, contestant number four. Contestant number five, Lacey Antonson. Lacey Antonson, contestant number five. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timers, please give me a signal when that one minute of silence is up. After all contestants have spoken, again we will give the judges all the time they need to complete their bouts. We will now begin the humorous speech contest. <laughs> Kevin Donahoe, sidestep it. Sidestep it. Kevin Donahoe. I was in a small church on the south side of Chicago with six of my fraternity brothers. This is my sophomore year in college. We had hired a cook earlier in the year, and he had died, unfortunately. And we had gotten so close to him in that time that we felt we had to show up at his memorial service. But now this small church was not like my church back home in Milwaukee. Back home in Milwaukee, we sat and waited to us to speak and when we were supposed to sing. But in this church, when the minister spoke, I would hear an amen or an hallelujah come out spontaneously. So I remember the minister saying this. He told this story. I'm reminded of the story of Methuselah, who had many children and grandchildren, among them Noah. And after 960 years, the Lord came to Noah and said, Methuselah. Methuselah, your time has come to join me. And Methuselah looked up to the Lord and said, So soon? <laughs> and I was amazed that someone had told a joke during a funeral. I had never seen that before. But I saw what it did. It allowed us, especially my friends and I, who were confused and, and fearful, it allowed us to get past that and get to this understanding that it's a very natural thing. It happens to everyone. Contest master, fellow toastmaster, honored guest, what I want to share with you is this revelation. The humor can allow you to sidestep those negative reactions and allow you to get to a positive response. Now, I use this at home. I picked up this trick after seeing the musical Annie. So I walk into the bathroom, and all of a sudden I have to yell at my son, Ryan, get in here and pick up what you left on the floor. And he looks up from his computer game, and he goes, Dad, I just cleaned my room last week, and I moved along two weeks ago. Why are you always asking me to do stuff? <laughs> now, my first reaction was, well, I thought that was a pretty reasonable request on my part. So I started getting a little angry. But instead, instead of starting to shout and yell and get angry, I chose to sing a song. 
It's a hard night life for you. It's a hard night life for you. You always have to pick up your dirty underwear. It's a hard knock life. So it worked. Now I've used the same thing at work, not the singing. <laughs> I was in a very intense meeting where the efficiency of my team was being questioned. Now I had done all the research, all the data was collected, put it on a spreadsheet, and shared it with my boss. And my boss looked at it and he goes, Kevin, I don't care about this little spreadsheet. And I thought to myself, Little spreadsheet, little spreadsheet. You know, someday, if this spreadsheet eats all its vegetables and exercises every day, it'll become a big spreadsheet. Just you wait and see. And that helped me sidestep this anger at him demeaning my work and allowed me to get past that to the more important issues. And it worked, it worked. It wasn't a big point to him that the spreadsheet was little. Now, there's two things you have to be careful about that, though. Those kind of jokes, you don't say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> the boss doesn't like that. And the other thing is you don't actually start laughing or smiling, because then people start thinking you're a little goofy. <laughs> but it works. It works at work. <coughs> but this revelation came around full circle a few years ago when my brother passed away. Now, my parents had already gone, so it was just the kids trying to deal with this. And, and there was a lot of fear and despair. So I was asked to give the eulogy at my brother's funeral. And I, I chose to tell, tell this story, among other things. And I said that, you know, I have read and studied many philosophers over the years, and theologians, and deep thinkers. And none of them could really help me that day. What did help me, though, was when I talked to my sister, my little sister. She said to me, Kevin, this really sucks. And I chose to share that story with my family because, you know, all that despair and fear doesn't help getting past the fact that once in a while, Life really sucks. And it, to me, that is what humor can help us do to maybe make our lives suck a little less. <laughs> it allows us to sidestep the negative reactions we have to everyday events and allow us to get to a positive response. That's what I'd like to share with you today. Thank you. Garrett Gray, caution, men at twerk. <laughs> caution, men at twerk. Garrett Gray. being the man of the house, 
my instincts kicked in. Honey, will you go see who that is? <laughs> I'll guard the bedroom. <laughs> Mr. World Champion, fellow Toastmasters, and guests with cowardly spouses, I had to man up. So I grabbed my baseball bat. I bolted down the stairs. I tore open that front door, and I went toe to toe with a ferocious kitty cat. <laughs> the cat bolted 15 feet away. I faced tougher cat burglars. <laughs> this one was a pussy cat. <laughs> Fearing the cat would forever disappear, I had to use a talent that very few people know that I, Garrett Gray, possess. I'm a cat whisperer. <laughs> and now you too can learn the hidden secrets of interpersonal feline communication. It's the newest Toastmasters manual. <laughs> My wife thinks I need interpersonal female communication. <laughs> There's one for that one too. <laughs> Gentlemen, five projects designed to master the art of saying, yes, dear. <laughs> A wise purchase. Back to the cat whispering. It's very rare. So I limbered up my muscles. I readied my vocal cords. Figaro. And it went a little something. Like this. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. The cat came. And I brought it inside. I soon realized I needed to find this cat its home. Because it had all of its claws. And it liked my new couch. The next morning, I posted flyers out all around town. That very night. Ding dong. I opened my door. And I came face to face with a strange man wearing bib overalls and a John Deere tractor hat. I said, sorry, pal. Halloween was yesterday. Scram. <laughs> but the man insisted. No, I'm Cletus. I'm here for the cat. Come on in, Cletus. Where are you from? Georgia? Alabama? No, Kankakee. <laughs> Where's the cat? I got the cat, and I popped it on my table. He's a nice boy cat. Well, that sure looks like my Clementine, but my Clementine's a female. Are you sure that's a boy cat? One second, Cletus. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I never was good at anatomy. <laughs> Wait, you have a guitar? Yeah, Cletus, I have a guitar. <laughs> Why? Well, when I play my guitar, my Clementine, she dances. <laughs> but don't worry, she don't twerk like that mighty Cyrus. Uh-uh, no siree, not her, uh-uh. She dances the Billy Ray Cyrus. Achy, breaky heart, who we? My Clementine watches country music television all the time with me. Now I know what you're thinking at this time. Cuckoo, cuckoo. But I couldn't resist. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the first time that a cat whisperer and a cat serenader joined forces with a dancing cat. Can you say YouTube sensation? Cha-ching. <laughs> I gave the guitar to Cletus. Cletus started to sing. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine, you were lost and now I found you. How I love you, my Clementine. Do you know what that cat did? It hissed. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped off the table and hid, her, hid it under my newly clawed up couch. <laughs> I stopped Cletus's farm aid concert. <laughs> Cletus, I guess that's not your Clementine. Are you kidding me? That's exactly like my Clementine. She's always playing hard to get. <laughs> but there's one more thing. Be sure. You see, my Clementine loves taking baths with me. 
<laughs> you have a bathtub? <laughs> yeah, I have a bathtub. Wait. <laughs> Come here, Cletus. Give me that guitar. Get out and stay out. <laughs> now, I got rid of Cletus pretty easily. After all, I'm a CE, a competent X communicator. <laughs> Toastmasters has a manual for everything. <laughs> now, after the Cletus fiasco, the cat did find a home. Mine! And now, that cat's me pal. We do everything together. We watch country music television. We dance to Billy Ray Cyrus. It turns out I'm not so good in anatomy either. I'm going to silence, please. <laughs> Tony Fuscon, a devastated fan, a devastated fan, Tony Fuscon. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, when I was a kid, I had something that happened to me that I thought was the end of the world at that time, something that I could look back on and really laugh about now. And it was all because I became a fan of something. Now, yes, I am a White Sox fan. You know, whenever you always get the question, White Sox, Cubs, how does one become a diehard fan over another? Easy. Mine started at baptism. The day I was baptized, I think my father put his hand over me. He said, White Sox fan. <laughs> I'm also a Bears fan. Wasn't a religiously watched games back then, but if the Bears were winning, I was happy. You see, it wasn't until I started working and I discovered the office football pool. Then I really got interested in football after that. But what happened to me was that I became a fan of a daytime soap opera. <laughs> now, I learned a lot about life watching soap operas. Now, a, Catholic, a kid who went to a Catholic school, we learned the Ten Commandments. Well, we learned thou shalt not commit adultery. But, you know, the nuns didn't tell us what adultery was at that time. <laughs> I was watching what adultery was at that time. I knew, okay, he's married to her, but then he's kissing her. He shouldn't be doing that. And then I, when I got older, I realized he was doing something else he shouldn't have been doing with another woman. <laughs> but, uh, now, may disappoint some of you, but I was not a Luke and Laura fan. Oh. I knew who Luke and Laura were. Everybody knew who Luke and Laura were. Whether you never even watched daytime TV a day in your life, you knew who Luke and Laura were. But see, I was a Guiding Light fan, which aired the same time as General yes. Hospital. Yes. So 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, my world stopped. I mean, if I was out with my friends playing ball, I had to go home at 2 o'clock. Why? Well, we, we do something at 2 o'clock. It's really important to go home at this time. <laughs> so, now, I was watching a story at that time that led up to a trial, the Jennifer Richards trial. Watching the story for months, okay? We have Jennifer Richards on trial for killing Lucille Wexler. Lucille's daughter, Amanda, vehemently wanted Jennifer to go to jail for what she did. But what Amanda didn't know was that Jennifer was her biological mother. <laughs> the woman she wanted to send to prison was her biological mother who killed the woman that she thought was her mother. But it was in self-defense. <laughs> See, Lucille tried to kill Amanda. To pre I mean, Lucille tried to kill Jennifer to prevent Amanda from finding out that was her biological mother. <laughs> so all these months I'm watching this story, and then one day, 
I'm home from school, okay? And I, thought, I couldn't have picked a better day to be home from school. <laughs> the trial just heated up, okay? Surprise witness comes into the courtroom. Jennifer nearly falls off her chair when she sees him. He knows the truth. He's going to reveal on the stand that she is Amanda's mother. Everything's going to come out in the open. I was with my grandmother that day. My mom worked. She watched the show as well. So the two of us are there. We're sitting there. Hearts beating faster. Remember that intense music? They used to play the best music back then to really build up a moment. So we're sitting there and we're waiting. My heart's beating faster. All right, we got it. We're finally going to, after all these months of keeping up with this, the truth is finally going to come out. Just to get to that scene, we interrupt our scheduled program before a special news report. <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't, you didn't just listen to me. I had to watch this story for months. I was keeping up with Linda Hirsch's column in the Sun Times. What's happening on the soaps every Saturday? I read to see what I missed when I was in school. You, you can't do this. Okay, the hostages from my ram were coming home. But prior to that story, we already knew they were coming home. They were just showing them being prepared to come home. Nothing that could not have waited until the 4 o'clock news. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, by the time that the news story ended, I missed everything that I had been waiting months and months of religiously watching when I could. I missed it all. So needless to say, my depression lasted about a week. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, most everybody knows that in, in 2009, Guiding Light got canceled, which was hard for me because it was something I did watch with my mother and my grandmother. It was actually my dad's mom that watched it, too. You know, my mom and her mother-in-law didn't always get along, but you swear when they were talking about Guiding Light, they were best friends. <laughs> <laughs> they never had any problems at all. So, after the show got canceled, there was a website, Soul Classics, that aired, uh, that sold DVDs of certain episodes. and. Through the weeks, I looked, okay, I remember that one, I remember that one, I'll buy this one, I'll buy that one. Spent more money than I really anticipated on <laughs> at the time. But, lo and behold, the one day when I was looking at their website and looking at everything that they had on there, they ended up releasing the Jennifer Richards trial. <laughs> the whole two weeks of what I missed was on DVD. It took me over 30 years, but I finally found out what happened. <laughs> so, I mean, I kept up with that story well, and I had that I was also keeping up with Draper's amnesia on the edge of night, which I thought I was going to graduate junior high by the time he got his memory back. <laughs> but I did finally get to see what happened. Two things in my life I never thought that I would see happen. One. The White Sox winning the World Series, <laughs> which we lost on 2005. The second is the what happened at the Jennifer Richards trial. I can honestly say I'm a very happy man. <laughs> <laughs> Crosby, gluten for punishment. <laughs> gluten for punishment, <laughs> Sherry Crosby. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. You know, I love toast. Rye, raisin, rosemary, mm, mm, mm. you name it. I love it. The problem is, bread does not love me. Believe me, 
I would not live this gluten-free lifestyle if I had a choice. Do you have any idea how many glorious products contain gluten? <laughs> Gosh, there's pretzels, pancakes, potato chips, why me? <laughs> Pizza, pasta, and pie. Pie! <laughs> gluten is as American as apple pie. Not eating pie is practically unpatriotic, people. <laughs> Just try turning down your mom's pumpkin pie. You'll see how many suspicious glances you'll get. You may have guessed by now that I haven't always lived this gluten-free lifestyle. Hence my tormented and angst-filled existence. In the not too distant past, I was strung out on that starchy goodness. <laughs> Nobody had to tell me to eat my Wheaties. <laughs> I wanted to have my cake and eat it too, and you better believe I did. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. Huh? Yes, please! Yeah. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> but all of this fun came with some not-so-fun consequences. Whenever I ate gluten, I would stumble around like a mindless zombie. Oh. My heart pounded out of my chest as if I drank two pots of coffee, and then jog to Dunkin' Donuts for a quick dessert. <laughs> Zyrtec <laughs> and migraine medicine were my two closest allies, all for my best friend and worst enemy, bread. Like I said, I was strung out on that starchy goodness until one day I hit rock bottom. I was out to lunch with my best friend, Brandy, and we were doing what we normally do at this place where it's unlikely that any person would want to give up bread at this point. I was actually at Panera Bread, <laughs> <laughs> having my usual chicken noodle soup in a bread bowl with a baguette on the side. <laughs> and I mustered up the courage and I said, you know, Brandy, I don't think this bread is good for me. Maybe I should give it up for 30 days to see if I feel any better. To which Brandy said, oh, well, what does gluten mean? <laughs> and I said, well, personally, Brandy, I don't think anyone knows what gluten really means, but I think it stands for gigantic list of unacceptably tasty evil nourishment <laughs> because it's so good yet so bad for me. So I got into this gluten-free challenge, cleared out my pantry and refrigerator of all of my gluten-containing items, seemed like all I had left was a couple of celery stalks, a few radishes, and a cold fish head. <laughs> so basically I starved for these 30 days. Halfway into it, I wake up super early from starvation, because starvation does make you wake up really early. <laughs> I crawl to the kitchen to make my breakfast of radishes and cold fish heads. <laughs> Somehow, I burned the food, caught the kitchen on fire, there's smoke billowing everywhere, the smoke detectors are going off, I pass out from bread deprivation. So the fire department comes, they break down the door, and I'm out cold, and as they're reviving me, I'm calling out, bread, bread, bread. I wasn't even calling for help, because I knew the only thing that could help me at that point was a cinnamon roll. <laughs> so I overhear the fireman talking, and Frank, he, this guy calls out, he says, hey, Frank, it sounds like we have another case of someone who tried to give up gluten. <laughs> and Frank yells out, somebody get this girl a sandwich! <laughs> I don't care what the experts have to say. Trust me, giving up gluten is what's life-threatening. <laughs> and not the other way around. <laughs> they say most cases of gluten intolerance go undiagnosed. But something tells me these so-called undiagnosed cases are actually in a witness protection. 
because nobody, I mean nobody, is giving up gluten without a fight. So I guess that must make me a gluten, oh, I mean a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Mr. Redmaster. Lacey Antonson, Learning Curve. Learning Curve, Lacey Antonson. It all started about 20 years ago, and my husband and I decided to have three babies in three and a half years. Ooh. Then this fall, we won the trifecta. We were the lucky winners of paying a small tuition for a state school for Curly. A larger tuition for a smaller school for Larry. <laughs> and Mo, Mo <laughs> was the largest tuition of all for the smallest um, college it was for the three of us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Toastmaster guests, I'd like to tell you a little story about what it's like to send your daughter off to college. It all starts with the college dorm checklist. She has to turn her nine foot by 50 foot dorm room, I mean dorm cell, <laughs> dorm cell, into a little college oasis. So we spent three days shopping at all the stores in town. First store was Bed Bath Beyond, check, check, and check. The second store was Ikea. Have you ever been to Ikea? It's a really big store, and we wrote a really big check. <laughs> the third store was not on the shopping list for the college, I think. But she dragged me over to it. It was Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Have you been to Victoria's Secret? Have you been to Victoria's Secret? There is nothing secret about what's in that store. <laughs> we finally sent her off to college, and this time it doesn't take long before the 18-year-old adults to start texting mom. Mom, can you send more money? That first month's allowance you gave me, it's gone. Lesson number one, this girl needs to learn some self-control. And that delayed gratification means that the word job comes before saving, and then in the dictionary comes the word spending. <laughs> a little modesty wouldn't be bad either. Then, of course, more texts come, and she says, Mom, I am so stressed out. Could you call our doctor and make sure my prescription is filled and send it to us? And I'm thinking, stressed out? It's the first week of classes. What are you going to be stressed out about? Not much time goes beyond, and she says to me, Mom, the food here is really bad in the dorms. Could you send me a container of hummus and some corn chips in the mail? And I think to myself, I don't know, can you? <laughs> what would Martha Stewart have done for her daughter Alexis? Martha would have sent fresh hummus, warm corn chips, and maybe thrown in like a sweater or a scarf for her daughter. And I'm thinking, I want to be that cool hip mom, but no, I'm gonna tell my daughter where she can go. She can go take the bus. <laughs> Go get the grocery store and on her way go to Walmart or Walgreens on the corner of Happy and Healthy and fill her own prescription. <laughs> she doesn't always like my responses, but then I don't always like what I get on these texts either. <laughs> Once again, not too much time passes by and she says to me, Mom, send my passport to me right away. Second week of school and I'm thinking, why does any 18-year-old daughter need their passport? And she texts me back, Mom going to Peru over winter break. 
we're going to study the tourism and the effect on their local economy. And we're going to decline Machu Picchu. And I'm thinking, does this girl have any idea what this trip's going to cost my local economy? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm trying not to freak out. So very calmly, I fly back to her. I said, well, I don't know. What's the cost of this trip? She goes, well, I don't know. The professor had told us. And I said, well, I don't know if you're going to go. Can we just sleep on it and text in the morning? She says, no. Too late, Mom. I already signed up for the class, of course, online. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this daughter has got to rein herself in a little bit. And then she says to me, Mom, I'm thinking about changing my major. I go, really? What are you going to change your major to? She goes, I don't know. I'm not decided. And I'm thinking, how about something fun like finance or accounting or this? <laughs> a little bit easier in our lifestyle would be really great. She has decided, however, that she would like to live in an apartment next year off campus with two girls from college and a gentleman, Kevin. I'm thinking, who is Kevin? She says, oh, Mom, don't worry. The four of us, we're going to go to India this summer, and we're going to dig some wells for the poor people in the town. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, aren't you the same daughter of ours that two weeks ago couldn't even take a bus over to Walgreens and get your pharmacy? <laughs> I'm thinking, no, no, no. No male roommate, okay? No trip to India, not on my dime. This can't be. I sent my daughter an email and I says, the spending habits of teenage daughters is a major concern. And she replies back to me, Mom, stop sending me these goofy emails. They're really annoying. True <laughs> 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 <Just> story. <laughs> There's a lot to be learned. She learned, needs to learn a little modesty. She needs to learn some self-control, some discipline, some time management skills. But on the other hand, I was learning a little bit of things too. Things like college loan, things like self-control. And so we're having this dialogue about communication skills, which obviously they don't have. All of these sort of demands came by text. It's not please or thank you or an old-fashioned letter. Just a matter of, Mom, this is what I want, when are you going to give it to me kind of thing. I'm thinking, this is not good. So my daughter and I are doing a little dance here and there. And she always says she's an adult. And I'm thinking, you're not really an adult. I'm waiting to hear you say, Mom, I've got a job, and it pays health care, and has a company car. And until I hear those days, I don't think you're really an adult. But when I said to her, how about we compromise? So daughter number three likes when I say, let's compromise. She's OK with text to me. That's the word she wants to hear. Mom. Please remain silent to view all the ballots and the collected.
Chester, we have collected all the ballots. Thank you very much. At this time, we will get to know our contestants. And we will start with the evaluation contestants first, please. Come up here and line up in the order in which you spoke. Toastmasters, which club do you belong to, and what's your highest educational level in Toastmasters? I've been involved in Toastmasters for a little bit over a year, about a year and almost a month now. I belong to three of the best clubs, Orland Park Toastmasters, Windy City Toastmasters, and Lincoln Way Toastmasters. Ooh. And I'm a vice president of membership at my Orland Park Club. Excellent. I see that you are the world's greatest husband for 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. How often do you say, yes, dear? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> That's why I got the mug that says, world's greatest husband, 2013. Excellent. Garrett, thank you for competing today. Mike Sullivan, how long have you been in Toastmasters, which club? I've been, in, I've been in Toastmasters for about 18 months now. I'm in Downers Grove Club. I haven't achieved anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a few speeches in. Excellent. Now, your interest is you're learning to play a guitar. Do you have a cat? <laughs> <laughs> well, it occurred to me this morning I'm having trouble really making progress, and maybe that's what, what I need to, that's the next step. <laughs> well, now you don't get it great, so you guys can get together and practice. <laughs> so Ruth, the same questions. Well, I still haven't caught what the three questions are. I believe it's how long? Which what club clubs? Highest educational level. Highest educational level. I am in uh, since 2009. I have been in several clubs. Currently, I am in three: Windy City, Hips, and West Suburban. And the highest level, I have gotten my silver awards. And I would like to apologize to those out there that I didn't speak loud enough during the evaluation. So I apologize to those in the back. I see you're a vice president of public relations. For anyone who would like to organize an event, what tip would you give the audience today? Use the free online newspaper articles. You can submit an article with just about anything in it. It might not show up to anyone, but occasionally you can hit the top of the search engines and that is the way you're gonna get promoted and uh, further attendance at each of the meetings and clubs and events. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for participating. <laughs> Down side up. How long? Which club? Highest level? Um, I've been in Toastmasters. I have last Claire. I think it's 20. 20 19, years. 1990. Uh, since 1990. And uh, my home club is the, the West uh, Suburban to to Toastmasters. And uh, highest, I've been brown, but I've done a lot of other things. Great, great. Your hobby is cooking. What do you like to cook most? What I like to cook most. So it, the interesting thing is, I just hosted uh, a co-hosted a retirement party for my, one of my clients for tw for twenty years, and this topic came came up: what do you like to cook most? And I remember one time we were in L.A. and we had this really fine place to eat, and he had catfish. And catfish, I don't like fish, but I remember. <laughs> 
the client rotating the plate to keep the eyes out, but for me, <laughs> I like beef burlough. That's kind of what I, I, I do. So do you try to stay away from gluten? <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. Hey, thank you for participating. <laughs>
Wow. How do you manage contest and being the president of a club? You know, we have such a dynamic group, so they really make it easy. Everyone really fulfills their roles very well. We even have one of our newest members here, and he even volunteered for today's event. So that's pretty awesome. So that just gives you an idea, a picture of how we're able to work all the different pieces. Wonderful. What is your favorite Evo nourishment? <laughs> Pie, of course. <laughs> I mean, there's so many kinds, and it's like, okay, so I can't have crust anymore? What's that about? <laughs> well, Sherry, thank you very much for participating. Lacey Antonson. Yota, how long? I'm with the Lyle Platinum Toastmasters, and I've been there about three and a half years. And I was the secretary about a year and a half ago, and I'm currently the treasurer. Treasurer. When I showed the, when she showed me the money, <laughs> I knew you were a treasurer. <laughs> How has this role of being the treasurer helped you outside of Toastmasters in the real life? Uh, I make a few phone calls, a few emails, click the buttons. No. What's the role that's most fulfilling? Then? The one that you think that has helped you the most outside in your life? In Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think that. Toastmaster of meeting, I'm realizing at first you really can't stay up there at the podium, but he's really good. Um, and then just leading the meeting along and making sure all the roles are filled. But I just like having that meeting and being in charge and making sure it flows and throw, throwing in those transitions between speaker and the next event. Well, let's see. Thank you so much for participating. Time I would like to welcome back to the stage our division governor Valerie Yusan. Well, was that fun? Yes. 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 It's I just love the contest. And now for everyone who's not a Toastmaster, I'd like to invite you to speak to one of the Toastmasters and come and find out what we are all about on a regular basis. Uh, first, I want to thank Prez. Didn't he do a wonderful oh, job? Yeah. 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 Prez's eighth contest. Oh, you didn't know you'd be so popular. <laughs> Before it was just a sexy accent. <laughs> now it's spreading the sexy accent. <laughs> so first, I'd like to present you with a certificate of Thank appreciation. Thank you, sir. And uh, really enjoy Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I'd like to uh, thank all of our functionaries. Without the help of everyone, we wouldn't have a really successful contest. We started on time, we ended on time, and it was a lot of fun. And we didn't you know, have to rush through everything. We got to meet all the contestants, and uh, it's just every, everything flowed really well. I'd like to invite all the functionaries to stand as I um, call your name. Um, Helen McCullough, Chief Judge, the timers, Jill Morgan Feller and uh, Carrie Olivia Stahl, ballot counters, Lynn Sinclair, Carol Soul, Renee Tabor, Sergeant at Arms, Marty Barton, Kevin Barton, welcome host Thomas Zhu, refreshment chair Kim Savage. Without her, we wouldn't have anything to eat. <laughs> uh, Chris Kostakis created the event right for us. Facilities chair Kim Savage, and a contestant program was Renee Tabor. Uh, please and I also want to thank all of our judges. They are confidential, so they, I will not ask them to stand. But I want uh, to also to thank them. Now the exciting part is <laughs> announcing the winners. And I'd like to call our um, Division governors, or, or I'm sorry, district governors. Um, I just like Donna Weston. Donna Weston. Thank you. 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 Thank
and Ethel is our district governor for marketing. And they're going to help uh, present the awards. <laughs> contest first and for third place <laughs> Thank you. 